Hi. <laughs> how are you doing? You guys, good. How are you? Good. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. Oh my God. Thank you for coming. Everybody is so excited. <laughs> People were pumped. They were like, Oh my God, Carl's coming on. I'm like, yes, yes, he is. Oh, and I feel like all, all of this for me personally has been a long time coming, uh, at my own level. So yeah, it's kind of refreshing that to finally not be alone, to not be under kind of uh, concern of legal threat that if this comes out, it's all going to get pinned on me for breaking yeah. the news and telling everybody. So now it's public information and I can tell sort of uh, my alleged side of the story. <laughs> so have you been holding all this in for the last while just because you didn't want repercussions from it? And now you know you can kind of share? Yeah, when I went through my divorce, it was lawyers were absolutely used and I was threatened to go homeless. I lost all my retirement, my savings. I almost lost custody of my kids. And it was all under the threat of if I came out publicly and named names and told specifics about things that I witnessed and saw that led up to my divorce. But honestly, it's all uh, related back to when uh, this particular Mormon vlogger family all moved and and their colleagues and that little clique moved down to southern utah and God. made friends with all of us <laughs> oh interesting okay i i'll give you my background before before we chat so i had no idea who ruby frankie was and i was doing my lives and people were like are you going to cover the a passenger story and i had seen it but i was like i don't even know who it is so i i just thought i'll just do a rundown so i did I went and researched for one episode and I never came out. Like I <laughs> have done way too deep of a dive into this woman's life and watched like so many clips now and listen to her podcast. Like I, it's mind blowing what she believed and how she treated her family. Like it's nuts. So I cannot wait to chat with you and find out your scoop on this. Like it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, even I have a, a kind of, I think, an interesting perspective because I sort of came out of that whole world. I started doing YouTube clear back in 2009, uh, I, and I only left the church back, uh, the Mormon church back in uh, January of 2018. Oh. So uh, it's been pretty recent. I went through a divorce just two years ago. Um, but yeah. The whole uh, process of I grew up in the Mormon church in southeast Idaho in in a town called Rexburg in Sugar City, which is very fundamentalist, very orthodox. When I say fundamentalist, I don't polygamist base. I just mean like very doomsday cultish, okay. like the world is going to end anytime soon. So if anybody I don't know if you've covered at all the Chad Daybell and Lori, Lori Ballow, Ballow case. Okay, so that family was in my hometown. So Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow was in Rexburg, Idaho. That's the town where I was born and raised. I have siblings that were getting ready to publish books with Chad Daybell when he apparently was, you know, uh, doing away with the kids in the backyard and burning them in the fire pit. So now Lori Vallow's getting a life in prison and facing all of that. And now uh, the Ruby Frankie case comes out and I'm like, what is this with these this mormon pressure cooker yeah. that creates this sort of little outliers that do this stuff that end up harming children or the people around them and it seems that the last couple of years they're all being exposed i mean i know the duggars aren't a part of that church but the duggars kind of with that documentary and lori vallow it, it, it's it's crazy like everybody's starting yeah. to kind of see what's going on i guess yeah the the reality of it is is that like Here's Ruby coming out on the first day of her court case and she's throwing her kids under the bus and blaming them and saying that for five years they've been hurting each other and yada, yada, yada and all that. But I'm like, these are supposed to be daily vloggers who film everything that uh, specifically work from home and homeschool a lot of them to stay yeah. at home so they can be there to protect their kids. So if this has been going on for over five years, uh, as Ruby claims in her court to blame her kids on it, then like, where are the parents? If they're all home daily vlogging and everybody who's watched all their YouTuber channels knows 
have security cameras all over their house. They use their Nest Cam security camera footage um, in their content vlogging all the time to capture little cute moments and things. You know? It's not like they, if, if it's going on for over five years, I don't understand how Bonnie can come out in their statement and say like, oh, we've, we've been trying to do the best that we can for the last three years. And I'm just like, I think people actually who know and have been watching all of this, I think know better. And I think it's impossible for anybody who is a Mormon or an ex-Mormon who's left the church. Everybody knows that if it's been going on for over five years, then the local church leadership absolutely knew what was going on. It had to have come up in confessionals and in bishopric meetings or other things. And so there's this whole interloop going on that has to do with the, the cultish aspects of all of it, where you have Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie, who are public figures making videos uh, to be the personification of Mormonism and the prototypical, yeah. stereotypical Mormon family, right? Like the right. stereotype of what you're supposed to be like, all the way to the point that they're doing counseling sessions and mental health classes and parenting classes That's and it. everything. And guess what? All of that billing, when they were billing those for those classes and mental health courses and everything that they were doing in sessions, they were billing the Mormon church and getting paid through the church to do all that. So it's this whole system and this cycle where it just self perpetuates the and creates this pressure cooker. But meanwhile, while they're filming all these videos, allegedly the kids are duct taped up in the basement, right? Yeah, exactly. And there was there was some lawyers yesterday who weighed in on the fact that she threw Russell under the bus like that in court. And they basically said it's going to be so detrimental to her in court because it just obliterated her character. Like it just made her look so bad that she would throw him under the bus like that, whether it's true or not, um, in a public forum when she's supposed to be, you know, his protector and his mother. And like, I, I just, this whole thing's just crazy. To me, it's a, a allegedly a case of of just narcissism narcissistic collapse where you have the con all-consuming narcissistic mother and she's dumping and reflect and and projecting out her own past and her own issues and her own problem yeah. between her and her sisters and all the weird stuff going on as that the adults are actually doing and involved in and hiding that now when she's being uh held accountable her first thing is to immediately blame the target, which is every narcissistic person picks a particular targeted vic victim within the family. And it's usually one of the children. And it's, anybody following this, it's pretty obvious who that is, sadly. Yeah, making herself the victim. So Carl, do you want yeah. to kind of start it at the beginning of kind of how you met the Frankie family? Yeah, so when I started doing YouTube a long time ago, uh, we when we moved from our hometown around Rexburg and St. Anthony area, we moved to Pocatello, Idaho. So we made friends with the Shaytards, who are really famous Mormon YouTuber family in Pocatello. So when we moved there, we were still Mormons. And so I was going to church and we met them at church in the same church building. And so we ended up going to conventions together in Salt Lake City and meeting uh, Ellie and Jared and Bonnie and Joel and Ruby and the rest of the whole family. And Happy so that whole movement coming on up. Yeah, so they were all doing YouTube together, plus there are a lot of other, you know, Mormon YouTubers that don't necessarily do it as a family, but they just film as themselves and things, but they're all in that kind of community, okay. you know. And so there's whole conventions that go on in Utah because uh, Utah is next to California is the number two largest population of YouTubers in the country. Um, and so there's a whole convention like that they ha that we used to have up in like the Provo Salt Lake City area and like thousands of people would come every year. But it was basically to give all the Mormon family vloggers a main stage and we would do dance off competitions and the whole thing to try and portray all that. But along with that, uh, suddenly you're in with this group and you earn like trust and you make friends with people and then you get invited to parties. And that's where I saw this whole other side, this whole oh, secret yeah. life that wasn't what was being portrayed on camera. 
And when all, when I went to this one particular party in California, when the whole Mormon vlogger family came down there, um, that's when everything completely changed. And then I decided I was going to block everybody. And when I blocked them all and my spouse at the time was like, well, this is career suicide and these are all our friends. And she didn't, she didn't want to stop. And so she filed for divorce and left me to continue. Oh my God. And what, what year was this? this uh, was this was, this was just two years ago. Oh, Carl. Yeah, when the divorce happened. So I blocked everybody pretty much like, I think it was after Halloween or something, June, like in October of 2019. I think that's yeah, yeah. when I blocked it. So, so does pretty it, sure your wife... it was a Halloween party. Oh God. <laughs> so your wife is still involved in this? Like she's still into this lifestyle? Like this is what, what she wants still? I honestly, uh, legally, I'm not allowed to even mention my wife oh. specifically by name as regards to any of this involvement whatsoever. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I, my, from my perspective, my divorce occurred because I blocked a particular friend group. I was like, let's move to Cal. We can move to Oregon. We'll do something totally different. I'll even quit YouTube. I just want to be a family. And then I was basically given an ultimatum and then it was over. Okay. So what happened? I'm not the only one either. I'm not the only one either. There was other people that were at the particular party that went home, made the same decision as me and are divorced now. And there's other people that are editing videos that are thinking about coming forward too. That's going to be huge. I mean, the more they yeah. come forward, more people are going to be in trouble and held accountable for all this. So you have to tell us about this party. So what happened at the party? Well, first of all, a lot of the people who pretend online that they don't drink and they don't smoke marijuana and they don't do a lot of these other things they immediately were participating in all of that stuff which was a surprise to me because at this time you know i had are the mormon church and so to me like to go to this party it wasn't like a big deal but to see this whole family there doing all this and not only that i mean even for just a regular party not even having them by the standard standards of Mormonism, because like whatever, people can do whatever they want in their yeah. private life. But what occurred was shocking. And there was several witnesses. I'm talking like there was confessions where they were talking about, oh, they, we get together all the time. They would say they would get together and have hot tub parties as adults. And, and they would basically as sisters with husbands and, and trade husbands and spouses and like swinging and swapping and all kinds of things. And it was confessed that they were acting like this was normal going clear back. Like, yeah, all of us sisters did this clear back into our childhood and stuff. And all this was coming out at, at one point, one of the females came over and tried to kiss my wife, like, right. And I was like, no, and I had to push her away. And we had, we went back inside. I went in the bathroom and changed and came back out. There was a, a, a naked girl laid out completely on the couch. Her Stop. husband was standing there. The oh. husband was standing there with a, no, listen, this is gross. The husband was standing there with a jar of peanut butter, trying to get the family dog to do stuff. Stop it in front of people. Like in front of the host of the party and everybody. Oh my God. Other witnesses. Yeah. So I turned and went out, went back to my room back in there. We left. Oh my I God. blocked everybody. And because I blocked everybody, that ended up unraveling my whole friends group and oh. everything. Yeah, your life in general. So this this is the party that was Ruby Frankie there as well as her sisters? Ruby wasn't at the part as was not at that party. Just her sisters were. It was it was there was a whole, there was a whole very famous YouTube Mormon family there and, and there was sisters and their husbands all involved. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm but now see when I see the kids, that. when I see Ruby blaming her kids in court on the first day of court, like all this party stuff is funny, but we have to remember now that like Bonnie was getting in trouble like three, four five years ago with YouTube headquarters 
And she was having to go in and explain herself as to why a lot of most of her YouTube videos for quite a while were getting clickbait off of portraying her kids having injuries, bloody noses and split lips and broken arms. And it was like almost every other video or every other week, it seemed like to where even their friends and people around them was like, what's going on? But like uh, they had to go into YouTube headquarters. They got interviewed among a whole bunch of other content creators at the time. And then they basically came back with their tail between their legs and had to delete a bunch of content. So it's like when they act like, oh, yeah, we've been trying to keep the kids safe for yeah. three years. It's like they were at the center of that whole problem of YouTube to where now we all have YouTube for adults and YouTube for kids. And Bonnie was right in the middle of all of that when that happened and they had to make that split online to try and keep children safe because parents and these psychotic vloggers were literally putting hurting their kids to try and get views oh see i and i didn't watch bonnie either so i wasn't aware of any of that going on Ever yeah you can go to different channels and you can keyword search like hot tub hot tub party you can go to other channels and keyword search on their videos and look for injury or hospital or broken or whatever and it will filter those videos to the top and you can see how many of them are still there that they haven't even taken down yet that's crazy you can do that on any channel i think people should to make sure that those get flagged and people don't do that for views yeah that's true that's a good point because then you end up with a situation like what we have now and i mean luckily russell was able to get out of the home and draw attention to all this but I mean, we don't know what happens behind closed doors. Like we really don't. We don't know anything about these families other than what they're showing and portraying on those cameras. Yeah, I again, like I still find it so hard to believe if what Ruby said was true in the first day of court that the kids were all hurting each other clear back to five years ago. It's impossible to me that the local church leadership didn't know that they weren't being told that the other kids or the neighbor kids or the people getting touched or hurt, wasn't confessing it. That is like what you do. You can't even go to church on Sunday and take the Lord's Supper, the bread and the water, or even participate in anything at all without being a total hypocrite in Mormonism, unless you go in and confess stuff like that to your Mormon bishop. So if this was going on for five years, how has this not come out? How come CPS didn't do anything? How come the local church leadership basically uh, tried to play it off and downplay it or they took the side of Ruby or whatever. But the whole thing now is coming out and I'm, I'm just really glad because I think the more a light is shown on all this, the less appealing it will be. And every time these moms or parents, they start going to hit record on their camera to stick, stick a camera in their kid's face, they really need to think twice about their motives. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I think I mean, I think it's so important that this has come to light and that people like yourself are able to come out now and, you know, share what what the situation is. And especially from your perspective, because it's so one sided. We only see one side and that's all people are kind of believing. So to have your yeah. perspective come out, it's like, you know, they're not these perfect, you know, people that they portray themselves online to be so. Yeah, you can still people are questioning in the chat whether or not I really knew any of them or what how I'm related. You can go back to all of their channels and type in uh, Carl and Ginger and stuff like that. And there's videos of all these people at my house swimming in my swimming pool, hanging out at my in my living room, and I'm over at their house, and all of our families are hanging out together and. You can even go to my YouTube channel and look up the dance off and see me and my ex-wife winning a dance off competition against Ellie and Jared. I love that you won. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Carl. Yeah, well done. We tied. <laughs> we tied. They they won the they won the Twitter vote, but we won the crowd over. <laughs> yeah. That's the important part. Winning the crowd's the important part. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The comment the comments are blowing up. He seems friendly and believable. Yeah, yeah, and, and if anybody's interested, hold on, I screenshot Carl's YouTube. Yeah, so my YouTube channel is called Carl the Crusher. Uh, my real name is Carl Andresen, but no one can spell my last name, so I call it Carl Crusher, just because it's easy, like a superhero name. Now, typically what I do since my divorce is I go and explore 
Um, I live by Zion National Park down in Southern Utah. And so I explore ancient mysteries, the petroglyphs, where there's buried UFOs and ancient artifacts. Now I work with uh, Native American groups and the team at Skinwalker Ranch and the History Channel. And I've uh, got a TV show and different stuff like that coming out. So I've totally changed life around into a new direction. I do all this now on my own, just as a documentary filmmaker, exploring the history of this region. But yeah, back before the divorce, it was like, yeah, uh, wife and kids. And we would, we were not daily vloggers. We were like every Saturday, upload a video Saturday morning, but we would take all week to do it, you know? So our kids weren't, <laughs> didn't hate us. <laughs> yeah. Put the camera out of our face, dad. And so were you like very involved in the church? Like you must have been at this point, like you must have been heavily involved in the Mormon church, like with all of these families and like living the same lifestyle you thought they were all living. Yep. Oh, that's yeah. Great. So I, when I was a member of the church, I was on the high, what was called the high council, which means like in an area, in a community, um, you would be assigned into what's called a ward, which is like a boundary of maybe like three to 500 people. Okay. And then over that ward, there's a bishopric in charge, which is like the local clergy. And then above that, there's like multiple wards. There might be 10 different wards and they'll combine into what they call a stake. And that stake has 12 high councilmen and a president. And I was on the high council uh, a member of the high council. So I was in charge of two bishop ricks and probably close to 900 people in the two different wards. I used to be in charge of a family history center, uh, helping the community do family history research. And I was also the stake historian. So I used to keep track of the history of the, the church in the entire region. But I, and I did that for several years, but I had leadership positions throughout my time in the church all the way back through since I was a missionary at 19 years old and, and did the whole thing. So when you left the church, did you leave completely? Like, are you, do you, are you completely out of that lifestyle altogether? Yeah. So in 2018 and the year before that, I went through some things where we went through like an adoption scandal where I kind of realized like getting answers to prayers weren't reliable. The church had taught me and a few other things and going through uh, other stuff. Like when I started studying the ancient history of North America, I realized some of the fundament fundamental teachings of the Mormon church were, were pretty racist and they weren't uh, uh, actual true to history. So I started having problems with it all clear back then. And, uh, but yeah, you have to use lawyers to have your name removed from the records of the church from the day that you're born the first time they take you in as a baby to church on Sunday, the very first Sunday that you go to church, they dress you all in white as an infant and they say a prayer in front of the whole congregation. And then they write your name into the records of the church and your records follow you your entire life. Even if you don't go to church and you stop and you try to run away and move away, they'll find you and send missionaries to try and get you to come back unless you use lawyers to have your, your information legally removed. Oh my God. I had no idea. Oh, wow. Yeah. So some people are just joining and everybody's kind of asking what the scoop is. So, um, do you want to, I, I know you probably don't want to run through it again, but do you want to just kind of give a quick overview of how, you know, um, Ruby Frankie and her sisters? Yeah. So I've been a YouTuber since 2009 and I started out as a Mormon family, uh, blogger and filmmaker. And so we made friends in Utah with the whole Mar Mormon YouTube community and made friends with all of those people, collaborated with them, filmed videos, went on trips. We went to Disney World, went, I went to Hawaii, did all kinds of stuff. And so we knew this whole family. And then, yeah, ultimately when we um, went to a particular private party when they finally let their guard down and showed their true selves a whole other side of this Mormon family came out. And now fast forward, I've been divorced because of all of it because I blocked all these people and unraveled my marriage. But now I see that uh, Ruby Frankie is actually, you know, facing charges for child abuse 
and allegations and a lot of stuff. And when you look back over the course of the last three to five years and that whole family and everything involved, it's finally time for people that know what's going on to, to talk, you know, instead of let people hide all this stuff because it's got to stop. So it's we, the Mormon church, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So people were just asking what your, what your impression or your opinion of Kevin is like, do you think Kevin has more of a hand in this than he's letting on? Or do you think it was just I, I, like with, with Ruby Frankie for just from watching the oodles of clips I've been watching lately, it just seems like her parenting was up here. Like you spill a glass of orange juice and her reactions up here. Like everything was just completely out of proportion with her. But Kevin seemed the same. Like, what are you, what's your opinions on him? It's so hard to know. I mean, we can speculate about whether or not like the way that narcissism affects people or if there was narcissism or all that and the type of psychological dynamics going into that. But with what I know was going on among the adults and the whole upbringing and the culture generation in that family um, and the fact that all of the the husbands and the brother-in-laws even with each other were complacent with a lot of stuff that to me is completely uh, <laughs> disgusting. But yeah, so I have no idea. I honestly, I don't think I ever met him except for at a convention one time. Most of my relationship and association with was with all of uh, uh, Ruby's sister and the extended family and her brother-in-laws, yeah. So for Ruby's sisters, for did, did you meet all three of the sisters? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it, when you traveled on vacation and stuff, were you seeing kind of like the same sort of disciplinary style with their children that you would see with Ruby Frankie's clips? You know, I would hear stuff like it was very common to joke about how like every single night it's like giving the kids Tylenol PM to make them go to sleep so they can go out and do their hot tub stuff and like things like that. And I just stupid parenting things and you know there's definitely all sorts of weird issues and things that were confessed about the relationship but nothing that i ever thought of as being like overt child abuse i never saw anything overt like that but when you know when it came out when ruby actually got arrested and all that came out it's one of those things where i'm like ah that that makes sense like the real what you see on the surface compared to the whole iceberg hiding underneath yeah. is like a whole other story. And even what I got a glimpse of at the, at the party with what the adults were willing to do, even among each other was like, a yeah, it, it was a huge red flag to me, but it really does. It's, it's uncalled for that. I think it's so crazy that Ruby is trying to blame her own kids oh, I know. for everything when, you know, if they, if they are, 24 seven YouTube vloggers that all work from home, then there has to have been supervision, adult supervision, right. church involvement, and all of that. You know, it's crazy. And victims haven't come forward. Like that's the part I don't understand. We haven't heard anything from family, neighbors, friends, which she claims, you know, 20 people. There's been no accusations or anything negative at all coming forward about Russell. Like he, nobody has said anything negative about that boy at all, except for her. Yeah, I think it's her totally projecting her own deep rooted familial issues and sibling issues and generational issues that she's carrying into this and projecting onto her own kids that are actually something that's wrong with her yeah. and her sisters. And I almost feel like she's trying to justify why she had them tied up and, and not eating like, oh, well, this is what they're doing. So this is their punishment. Like it's, it's nuts. Like I just can't get over it. All of that stuff, there's certain baked in things within the church that it doesn't take very much to take for a parent to try to try really hard. Let's try extra hard to be righteous. Let's try to be extra spiritual. So if you're supposed to fast on fast Sunday and go without bread and water and give 10% of your tithing, if you really wanted to show your devotion, suddenly you're going to go 48 hours or you're going to go until you feel spiritual ready, maybe three or four days as more of a, like a purification. And you're really going to, you know, 
dress exactly how you're supposed to do and groom yourself right and you're going to pray faithfully and there's and you can get really sort of like OCD with it and some people can go uh, overboard you know to where it's very unhealthy it becomes a means of control uh, a mechanism of control and you got to remember that Mormonism started with the founders Joseph Smith trying to push the age of marriage and the age of accountability all the way down to eight years old because they were doing child marriages child weddings and brides and polygamy and everything all in the culture and even Brigham Young, when they moved to Salt Lake, they were doing kidnapping Navajo kids and selling them back to families in Salt Lake. And it was part of this whole racial cleansing thing. And they were all kids. And, and this goes on and on to the point now where even in Southern Utah, where I, I live here in the town next over, Colorado City, is the remnants of the polygamous town where there is still just disorders from the inbreeding that goes on because they're clinging to the beliefs in the cult down here and they're trying to keep it within the family. And so to see this stuff come out in the mainstream version of the religion, it still isn't that much of a, a shock because it's just one step further over somebody deciding, you know, they're going to take it a little bit more serious. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're convinced that Jesus is going to come back any minute and they're seeing the signs of the times and they tighten down the screws and everything gets real serious and the people who paid the price are the innocent kids and the people around that when the parents kind of lose their grip on that so i don't know this family carl but everybody's saying the the is it the Brigham? is that how you say it family the Brigham family yeah they're all saying oh my word the Brigham family was involved um and they're they're all shocked is is is, are, is that a family you're familiar with as well the, the Binghams? I don't really even know the Binghams. I can't oh, like remember the Bingham name. Bingham. Bingham. Oh, I said it wrong. Ah, the Bingham family. Bingham. I can't remember the Binghams. I must have not known them. Okay. So all of my friends group was like the Daily Bumps, Ellie and Jared, Bonnie and Joel. Uh, you know, I knew Ruby a little bit. I don't think I ever collaborated with them. But then it was, you know, that whole group around there. But we were also friends with... Carter and Lizzie Scherer and a bunch of people out of California. See, we didn't quite fit in in that world because right when we made friends with all the Mormon vloggers was right when we were also kind of leaving the church. So we were friends with them, but they and they they were friends with us because they thought we were safe to be themselves around because we now. Right. See how that works? Yeah. Because we weren't members anymore. It was like suddenly they thought it was fine or whatever to but they were hook right like so anyway but yeah it's it's a complicated thing mormonism i think creates the the pressure cooker and i think that uh it's you're going to see a common pattern here where ruby trying to exemplify her beliefs and personify what it means to be a mormon mom and to be the face of that to the world pushed her to this extreme level to where she's in this relationship and it manifests out these darker secrets that are closeted and generational in that family. Okay. They're asking if you know the Leroy. People can go, so people can go to any of those YouTube channels that they're speculating on. I highly recommend that you go to those YouTube channels and what you do on when you're on your web browser, you go to where it says videos, and click that and then there's a little magnifying glass over on the right where you can search just that channel and you can type in keywords like ouch hurt hospital broken or puberty or just any inappropriate thing that you can think of that sh kids shouldn't be doing on camera and you can sort of audit these channels and it will show you any of those videos that they're using that type of content in order to get clicks and promote themselves for so you, yeah exploiting their kids and things like that so the only way to do it is to go watch dog and look at those channels to see if there's a pattern there and to search for it and then to do like what we're doing now and shine a light on it so that they can't keep doing it and hiding it yeah so everybody's asking about the leroy's i don't know who they are um i know about them that i 
I think they're still daily vloggers there. I think they're one of those families that like the husband always really rubbed me the wrong way, kind of like Kevin did. And a lot of these, a lot of the Mormon vlogging community have this weird closeted American psycho thing going on that I just didn't never, <laughs> it's just never vibed with me. <laughs> oh, and apparently a whole other swingers life too on the side. Not good. Yeah. Not good. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, would you be willing to answer some questions if we go to the the um, chat? Sure. Okay. Um, guys, if you have any questions that you want to ask Carl, drop them in and we'll try and read some of them. We just He just said about the Leroy's. Yeah, he didn't know them as well. The Butlers. Do you know who the Butlers are? That's the Shea Tarts. Oh. If anybody wants to know the scoop, if anybody wants to know the scoop on them, they should go watch Dana Montana. She uh, did a Me Too video on Shea Carl. Oh. Basically, all of the alleged encounters where he would get inebriated and then go over to his house and try to do stuff to her. Yeah. Okay, people keep dropping daily bumps. I don't know what that is. Do you know what daily bumps are? Uh, Brian was one of my best friends in California at the time. Um, he was, uh, so they were the host of the party at California. They, oh, they were the host of the party that you were at. Yep. So they're not, they're not Mormon. Right. Oh. And they're, uh, yeah, they're daily vloggers as well. Okay. They were coming up to the conventions as well because they were considered family friendly. Now, I don't think that daily bumps do anything where they, I never saw anything about them injuring their kids or anything. There was just one interaction in the house where, where I felt like Brian hit on me, like he wanted to oh, do girl. stuff with me. And so I was like, dude, what is with all these people? You had your eyes yeah. wide open that night, like <laughs> whacked open. It was, it was feel like the worst year of my life. It was like the, I went through two years of just straight hell through all of that trying to, yeah. I can't even imagine. It's crazy. Like you, you're going in thinking one thing and then you're going home that night. Like what just happened? Like this is, that's crazy. Right. Oh my God. Uh, Brock and Boston. I don't know any of these names. <laughs> They're just all Mormon YouTube families okay. and stuff that okay. you can go and keyword search on and see what they do. Most of them are, are pretty good. Tannerites is one of those that I highly recommend you go do keyword searches on. They, I think they were part of that mix with Bonnie that they, you know, their entire, the Tannerites channel, they call themselves the Yahweh family because they think they they want that to mean W-A, or Y-A-W-I means like you are worth it or something like that. So it's another Mormon family trying to daily upload what it means to be a Mormon and like, and they're actively pushing that image. And so I think there probably is a pressure cooker going on there. That's weird. So I have a bunch of people that are saying um, that Jody's cousin, Jesse, that spoke is in here. Um, Hi, I, Jesse. I, but if Jesse's in here, Jesse, we'd love to chat with you too. Yeah, you to that was such a relief when Jesse finally came out and started speaking out because she confirmed that Jody and their little connections cult thing that they were building the Mormon church. And I think that was something that was overlooked. I think it's impossible that the Mormon leadership and the people involved and around there, if what Ruby said in court was true, there's no way that they didn't know. Yeah. There's no way they didn't know all that time. Oh, I just. People are asking about Ohana adventures. Do you guys want some Ohana adventure stories? <laughs> yes, I don't know what it is. You'll have to tell me what it is first. Ohana adventures is a norm, another Mormon YouTuber family. They specifically told other people that they were gonna move to Southern Utah and try to copy my YouTube channel to try and climb over my back and take oh. over my audience. And he would, when they moved down to Southern Utah, he would come over and trespass in my backyard and harass my family at night and knock on the door and run off. And he was like trying to start a prank war with me. But yeah, I don't, I don't know that there was any kind of like abuse or anything going on, but I never liked those guys. I can imagine. Adventures, I, they were always rude to my family, rude to my kids. I never liked them. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. 
Yeah. Leroy. Yes, we mentioned the Leroy's guys. He he knows of them, but not he wasn't friends with them. They're just, they're April just... and Davy. April April was raised in a polygamous family. Her parents were polygamous. I know that she. That's there's a lot of some crazy stuff around that. So Aspen just asked Carl, um, "Are you worried about speaking out?" You know, now that Ruby's been arrested and it's all coming out, I think there's so many people and even major news networks that are all covering it. They're addressing the issues and anybody can go back and Google search all of this stuff or look on YouTube themselves. And uh, yeah, everything that I'm saying is obviously just allegedly yeah. and they're just the uh, stories from my personal experience. And so, yeah, not enough Nelson's. Do you know the not enough Nelsons? I don't, I don't know them. Yeah. Because you're way behind. Oh, I think the LeBrant family is probably great. There's a lot of people that I feel like are doing it with genuine intentions that are, that are good. Do you have an update? Family fun pack. Oh my God. <laughs> are these all bringing back memories that are not so good for you? <laughs> I forgot all about them. Some of these people will probably, they could definitely try to sue me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Family Fun are... Pack is one of that group that I would say is definitely, <clears throat> what I saw off camera was not what they pretend to be on camera. And we, uh, Family Fun Pack was people that we distance ourselves and that I cut off and distanced myself from before. Um, the Mormons, the other Mormons. Oh, is part of the party. So people can go look into that. But Melissa, there's a, there, yeah, there's a lot of other YouTubers and other content creators that have been to conventions and stuff with Family Fun Pack have all experienced crazy, like Karen situations or crazy Mama Bear situations with her that have just been, you know. Yeah. I don't Some, like what's going on. Does, do the shapeheads have good intentions? People should go watch Dana Montana's videos about when she was worked for Shay. That'll give you guys an answer. Does anyone I'm not think friends with any of those people? Oh, no. I, Ruby Frankie has been um, banned from YouTube, so she definitely won't be returning to YouTube. For life, she's been, yeah, banned. Do you think there will be any changes if Ruby and Jody go to jail? I think more people are like Carl are going to start speaking up. Yeah, I think that the I think that everybody, all of these families who are looking at that and it feels like awful close to what they're doing or what's going on. Hopefully, this makes them think twice and before they wake up and hit record on the camera or when their kid falls down the stairs or crap on a bicycle, their reaction as a parent should be different now. Yeah, I hope so. And I hope that the, the entire way that people think about it and second guess themselves, I think they, that it should occur to them that you can't get away with that kind of stuff anymore. It's not something that you can just run with and delete and disappear. Like now, you're going to get called out. It's going to get drug out on a TikTok, and you're going to get exposed if you try to do this kind of crap. Yeah. Vandy, we don't, um, we haven't got an update yet on the grandparents if they're back yet or not. Carl, you probably don't, don't know too much about the Ruby Frankie news stuff. Yeah. So yeah, Vandy, we're not sure. Ellie and Jared's parents. Yeah, we're not, we're not sure. Oh, I know that Jared, Jared used to take his dad to the conventions with him all over the place for some reason. I don't know why, but there was a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to babysit. <laughs> Who knows? People Bro. are asking. People are asking if yeah. you if there's any of the party on YouTube. I doubt it. I don't. Uh, it was a Halloween party. It was a couple of years ago. There's probably a Halloween videos and stuff and there's things, yeah. I'm oh, pretty okay. sure it was a Halloween party. It would have been. 
It would have either been at the end of 2018 or 2019, honestly, that all of that is a blur. My dad was dying of dementia. We just left the church and then all I was going through the divorce and all that was going on. And so it was like, it was hitting me from every direction at once. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, somebody says the parents are back. Their IG are set in the United States now. They're, oh, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure, guys. I haven't seen an update for that. What did he say about eight passengers? So Carl isn't as familiar with Ruby Frankie. He's only met her a couple times. He, he was, um, well, you can say Carl, but associating more with her sisters. So you kind of had the scoop. Yes, all the sisters and the family dynamics and what they said about the fi family dynamics generationally and what I saw all of them do. Yeah that there was resentment between the like they all resented ruby in a way like like she was a threat because th she wasn't the first one to start doing the vlogging um ellie was the first one so she started first and so she grew to a certain point and then bonnie started and bonnie like passed ellie and so there was jealousy there and then when ruby started she shot past and took the whole thing over but not only that it was like this when when everybody is doing things that are not what they should be doing and if there is abuse going on or if there was swinging and i just if there was like weird incest and stuff going on then it creates this dynamic where it's like you better not talk you better not talk you better, and you know and the one person that's the most unpredictable like ruby who's who's going on camera and constantly coming under attention for saying crazy stuff that creates pressure to the rest of the family that they have to answer to and now have to try and hide. And that's what you see is they're running around and they have to cover each other's tracks because underneath the tip of the iceberg and underneath the surface, they realize that they're all connected. You know, if the abuse is happening going back five years, where's all the parents who's watching the kids yeah. like they're all suddenly called into accountability for you know what's going on so somebody just asked you know. and i didn't we didn't even really talk about this but um so all these mormon vloggers who are doing this it's kind of for the church and the church you know wants this happening to get you know the church out and stuff do they get paid like does the mormon church pay them as well for this so it does happen. There are special events where the church will do marketing campaigns. Like every Christmas, they'll do light the world and they will pick uh, Mormon YouTubers that they consider on a list of Mormon influencers that are approved that have the image. Now I never did. Cause when I, even before I left the church culturally, I had tattoos. So I don't always have that public image that they wanted. You know? So I never got the paid deals, but I definitely got asked, hey, will you do a video about this? And will you do that like for free? But the real uh, prominent families and stuff, they got handpicked and paid to do videos to promote things. And also even to go guest appear and like film in videos that were promotional church projects or Christian projects and things associated with it. So that like while they're on set filming behind the scenes and posting pictures for Instagram, they're all stuff like they're in some nativity scene with their children and things, you know, to try and promote this church thing. But the entire aspect of the church and how it's baked into them is their whole mission in doing YouTube to begin with. So at the core of every Mormon YouTuber, if they're a true believer, they're trying to share the gospel through the message of their example. So by portraying the example of what it means to be a Mormon, they're shining that light of Mormonism to the world like an ambassador to try and spread the gospel and to try and convert people. So if people comment down in the comment section or message them privately and say like, oh, I found the church because of watching your family and I want to grow up and get married and have a wife and kids like you or find a husband like yours or whatever, all of that uh, gets baked into the motives when they wake up every day to put on that face and to put on their persona and to make sure. And that's what happens every Sunday. Church, it's probably in a lot of, you know, intense churches. You go there, your kids better stress, uh, dress up right. You better show up on time. Their hair better be combed. And there's a certain level of appearances going on that everybody's judging. And when you've got millions of followers and all that pressure, 
and ev all the members of the church are looking at you. Millions of children are looking at you and, and, and your local community and everybody. And that's how you also make a living and your business is tied up in it. It's like a, wow. it's a, it's a nasty formula. Yeah. Now people are asking your opinion on it. They ask me this every night I'm on and, and I'll, I'll give you mine if you want to, but do you think that Ruby and Jody were in a relationship? Uh, what I know about that family and the culture generationally between the, the siblings and everything, and even what happened that caused my divorce, I would say if I was going to go to Vegas, I would bet on it. <laughs> I would bet all, I would bet everything that I have on it. See, I get yeah. skeptical because they come across as so homophobic in their podcast. So I was like, There's, they can't be like, they come off so homophobic they're, and they're all all they're all positive. They're they're what? It's all they're all, the husbands, the wives. If, if people could see the stuff that I saw and the things that they said, and the that's the fact that the that they even pre pretend that they're married is kind of a joke to me. Yeah. The fact that they even all pretend like they're married is a joke to me. Oh my god. I'm not married anymore because of because I wouldn't join in. <laughs> <laughs> You should have just went with the flow. You would have been the same as too. Like, oh my god. Yeah, that's what I was being. That's what I was being gaslight and told for like a year. But look yeah. at you now. Like, look at you've got like three million followers on your YouTube from doing your own thing instead of that. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, I've been able to kind of get my own build up from that. Like everything, everybody on TikTok now is all all a fresh start. The TV show that I've got going on with the History Channel is all completely my new thing. And it's all, life is good for me now. Yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. Like, that's amazing. Everything happens for a reason. I said, oh, everybody's asking, do you still live in Utah? Yeah, so I live in, I live in Southern Utah, kind of in between St. George and Kanab. I live right by the polygamous town, Colorado City. But I live down here because it's next to Zion National Park. And so what I do is I film, uh, I go around to the ancient uh, petroglyph sites and the Native American ancestral sites around here. And I document the history of these locations and all the weird paranormal activity and UFO sightings that happens there. Kind of my own version of ancient aliens and stuff. So, but it's the real deal. We don't, we don't fake anything. We go to actual locations that the government previously researched and studied, and then we go see what they missed and try to uncover more. So it's pretty cool. So cool. Um, someone asked if you've ever met Ruby and Bonnie and their, their brother, Bo. Uh, yeah, I met Bo. I mean, they're, they're, they're all just that pretty typical Mormon Provo type, you know, they all, look and act even though they're in their 40s and stuff 30s and 40s like they're still on a mission like they're still a 19 year old missionary boy oh god because he's he's been pretty quiet through all this he didn't share the the you know group statement and nobody's heard anything from him right now so everybody's kind of wondering go back on to these different youtube channels and keyword search the videos and type in hot tub and see who's sitting in all the freaking hot tubs with oh. each other at night Hot tubs have a whole other meaning now. So does peanut butter. I just now. now. Hot tub time machine, everyone. Oh, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, Me either. I'm, I can't either. <laughs> no. I, oh, the whole thing's just either. beyond. What happened in? Oh, everybody's saying what People happened. People are in asking the what happened. What happened in the hot tub was. Uh, incest and homosexual incest in between families allegedly and it was joked about and confessed about and it was like you don't do that do you guys want to do that blah, 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 blah. like it was like a whole thing yeah like no we don't um anyone yeah. who's just joining carl's talking about a party that he was at with bonnie and her family and um ellie i think did you say was there I'd rather not specifically okay. say there's just no, a Mormon there family. Were, that... <laughs> family members in attendance. 
Um, and it was extremely There was Mormon content creators that were, yeah, that were all definitely not acting like they pretend to be on camera. Someone just said, was the party around the time of CVX Live? But I don't know what that is. CVX Live was a big convention that I helped start up in the Utah Valley up there where all the Mormon YouTubers basically had a big stage to help promote each other. Oh, okay. So yeah, so everybody, everybody was there. Uh, the party that I was at that was like that was in California. But the incidents, like the hot tub stuff, I guess, was like a regular thing going on. It doesn't matter where. Saturday night. Yeah. Oh. Getting together for movie night. So someone just said, do you think the kids then, would Ruby and Kevin's kids be safe moving in with Bonnie or Ellie? If, uh, if I was to hypothetically, so I actually have a bachelor degree in social work and I used to do child protective stuff and I used to do counseling with kids. I worked in a juvenile court system and everything like that. Um, I think it would be really important that the, that whoever's working on those placements. So the, the first instinct is you're going to put kids in with immediate family members or close members. Yeah. You don't want to put them in foster care. You want to keep them in the family and you keep them close to home or with the dad or the safest place possible. And you can't, you know, people, they're not held guilt. They've been charged and convicted in things, which is the sad thing. But, you know, when I had to make those decisions as a social worker, I would look at all of those variables and definitely talk to the kids and then also take into account that the children are coming out of a situation where they're vulnerable and so that it's a common occurrence for them to get moved into a secondary place that isn't any better. Yeah. And I think that's what people kind of can't I wrap them so. around. I, I hope that things have changed. And I would imagine that they're okay right now. Everybody's probably keeping up pretty good appearances right now. Yeah. And, and I mean, from what we can gather, they're, they're in custody of DCFS, which I don't know where they are right now, and they're not saying, but everybody's kind of wondering why they didn't immediately just go with, like, another family member, but it doesn't work like that. Like, they have to investigate and figure out best placement for them, so it's it's kind of tough. And now with Russell not being allowed... Yeah, to depending on the age yeah, and depending on the age of the kids and stuff like that, where it gets complicated and the whole dirty thing is when you have Jody and Ruby coming out and their first mode of conduct is to blame the kids and say they shouldn't be together. The risk of the children now getting all fractured out into separate homes and split up to where now they're not allowed to talk to each other. Now they can't unify their story. They can't stay together as victims and support one another in a unified effort. It's hard for them to get all the same lawyer to represent them or to be together to feel safe very easily if the parents do that and they say the kids are not safe to each other and the court abides by that it will split the kids up and it will fracture their ability to keep each other safe at a certain level and so that's why it's important that people even cir circumferencing around this like uh, like jesse hildebrandt coming out even though she's worked in the office People who are related and know this stuff, I think it is important. And the people in the community and, and the war, if whoever knows who the bishop is, they probably know. And it's like, come on, like it's time to come out and have this stuff stop. Hiding it is not the answer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. Oh, thanks, guys. Any history with that YouTube 3 family? You, that you, YouTube family, oh. they just spelled it all weird. Yeah, I know those guys. Again, anybody can go and just look on YouTube channels and keyword search what they want. I I could have different little opinions on all of them. Yeah. yeah. Did you know the McKnights? Someone's the McKnights. asking. Weird. Thanks for joining the family, guys. Uh, I know the dad. Hey, so I know the dad, Sean McKnight. He was at the YouTube meeting and aware and helped arrange, I think, the YouTube meeting and was friends with like the CEO and the people at YouTube headquarters when Bonnie was called in and had that whole meeting about her con her content being oh, okay. inappropriate, having her kids all injured and stuff. So I think Sean McKnight remembers all of that. 
okay. from the yeah from the Brooklyn and Bailey. Have you ever talked to Josh from Dad Challenge podcast? Oh, I saw that the other night. Right? Yeah. No. no. Yeah. The Sean ways. Well, listen. Wait, this the Dad was... Challenge podcast. Yeah, I think Dad Challenge podcast. He did a video about my YouTube videos, so I do have one YouTube video where I talked about Ruby, and then I went through and finally told kind of my whole version of the story of my divorce and like a whole hour long thing. And so I think he took clips from that and made a video. Okay. Too, but he was streaming I the court to him directly. The, he was streaming the court session the other day that, that nobody could get into. Um, he had it on, so he had like forty thousand people in his room, and I think that's why people are asking because he he was kind of one of the only ones where we could listen to what was going on. Somebody just said, "Where were the kids yeah. during the hot tub party?" <laughs> They probably were given Tylenol PM and drugged to go to bed early. Yeah, right. That's what I was thinking. Oh. Uh, well, Carl, thank you so very much for chatting with me tonight. If you want to do it again sometime, I would totally be up for that. This was fascinating. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, if any more comes out, I've kind of like spilled the tea and the beans on everything. Does everybody want one last spilled tea? Yes. One last thing before we go, should I share one more thing? There was one person in this family who at a particular time was undergoing a ton of plastic surgery. And while she was daily vlogging, like she was a Mormon mom, she was getting super high on her pain pills and trying to have an affair with her plastic surgeon. Oh messaging and plastic surgeons sending totally inappropriate messages and all of that yeah and like all of that came out too and was like a whole deal everybody's spamming bonnie 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 oh my god yeah he's like just gave you the tea you'll have to figure out who it was oh look at sued people are god. smart people have been watching these channels a long time yeah, they can piece everything together. Anytime I forget something or ask something, I'm like, what is? And, and they drop it. Like they, they know their stuff. The switch up. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Best yeah, off. people are asking how I know all of this. I, I know all of it because I used to be friends with all of them and work with them and collaborate with them and make videos with them. If you go back on their channel, they were over at my house. I was over at their place. We used to all work together and go to conventions together. And then there was basically one big private party where a bunch of this stuff came out when they finally showed the true colors. Not good, guys. Um, who was that one? Not really, Kale. All right, Carl, it was so nice to meet you. And thank you again so very much for uh, agreeing to chat with me. Um, we've been talking about this for the last week, this story. So I knew everybody would be so pumped to, to hear from you and to get the scoop. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm glad that everybody's aware and has the broader perspective and is thinking outside of just what the, the, the laser beam focuses and, and remembers the bigger picture of everybody involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, well, I'll reach out and, and if you ever want to pop on again, um, you know where to find me. I'm definitely here quite often.